Building your first Plex Media server can be a little intimidating if you don't know what you're looking for. So today I've decided to take a budget of $500 and use that to piece together a Plex Media server that's capable of handling just about everything the average home user can throw at it. Okay, so to start this off, I will say that everything I'm going to show you today, or just about everything, is going to be linked to Newegg, uh, with the exception of one up here, uh, just because I found it cheaper. But everything should be with Newegg, just because I trust Newegg. I've ordered so much stuff from them, I don't even want to admit it, and I'm pretty much a customer for life until they really screw me over. So starting things off today, let's go ahead and look at the case that I chose, which is pretty much entirely only because it's cheap. $31, $31 for cases is just super cheap. This is a mid tower case. The thing that I looked at when I was looking for cases was this. I wanted to make sure that it had at least four bays, four internal three and a half inch drive bays. This is just for expandability. Um, even though this build that I'm giving you is only going to have one hard drive in it and one SSD in it, I wanted to make sure that I had at least four. This is why I like this. It only costs $30.99. Now, of course, you can change this all you want to, um, but if you want to go with something cheap, this is definitely an option. It looks good. It uh, Let's see the insides of it. See if I can get a picture of the inside. Here it is. See, it looks really easy to access the drives. I mean... Oh, it even has three separate three and a half inch or two and a half inch. So this is definitely a good case. This is right up my budget alley of only being $31. Now, starting off again with the budget build, I did go with an AMD processor. Now, you can switch this to Intel if you want to. Obviously, if you know what you're doing, then you know you can go with an AMD build. But I decided, or I'm sorry, an Intel build. So taking a look at this. What I did is I got the 8-core 4 gigahertz processor. Now, this is the 8350. When I looked it up on Passmark, this one had about 2,000 more Passmark scores than the Intel CPU that I found that was actually slightly more expensive. So just from a raw processing standpoint, this AMD FX processor is going to be able to handle more thrown at it than the Intel, the budget Intel that I found. Now, this, of course, is completely up to you. If you want to drop down, you could go with the six core and go with the 6300. If you want the 6300, you would go from 169 to 89. And this is definitely a possibility. Or for that matter, you can go from the eight core four gigahertz to the 3.5 gigahertz if you wanted to save yourself a few bucks. But the big difference is going to be obviously the 89 to the 169. I mean, that's a huge difference in price. If you don't need all the power here, then you could definitely drop it down here and save yourself some money. For me, I'm building this one with the idea that once it's built, it's not going to be rebuilt. Because I'm a firm believer if I'm gonna upgrade my computer, and when it comes to core components like this, I'm gonna do a full upgrade. That means a new motherboard, new CPU and everything. So just about any CPU that I pick is going to stay in that system. If you take a look at the Passmark scores, the 6300, six core processor for $89, has a score of 6,347. Now, if you take a look at the 8350, you have a pass mark score of 8,966. So with that said, going directly to performance of Plex, you could get at least one, if not two additional streams going with the more expensive processor. However, if you go with the $89 processor in this build, not only will you save yourself some money, but you will also still be able to get at least three to four streams out of this server at the same time with ease. So this is not a bad server or this is not a bad CPU whatsoever, but this one is gonna give you that extra two to maybe three streams if you wanted to go with it. So definitely a big improvement. I chose this for this build, but it's definitely up to you as far as what you think you can afford. As for motherboard, what I did is I just went with this ASUS. This was mainly just looking for budget, but there are a couple things that I was looking for, or at least one primarily thing that I was looking for. If we look at the specifications here, it has number of memory slots, four. I wanted something that had four slots just in case in the future, if this ever wanted to be upgraded, you could. 
And I also wanted to make sure that I had plenty of SATA ports. This one has six SATA ports. Now they're only running at three gigabits a second, but that's okay. We don't need it to be running at six gigabits per second. That's not gonna be a bottleneck for Plex. So having six SATA ports and having four slots for RAM is gonna allow this to not only maintain your growth in your Plex media server when you add more hard drives, but it's also gonna allow you to upgrade it later with more RAM for whatever reason you might need to. Because as you are going to see here in a second, this Plex media server build won't have that much RAM. And that, is, of course, is $55. Okay, now this is the SSD. Now I chose this SSD primarily because it was cheap and it was one of the better performing SSDs out of the cheap bundle. And what I mean by that is you have 545 megabits per, megabytes per second read and 525 megabytes per second write. However, that doesn't really matter too much. A lot of this is just having the price of it within this budget build. But what I would recommend, if you shop around just a little bit like I did, I found this one, 128 gigabyte, it's the same brand, SSD, except it's $48.99. Now I went with this because if this is only going to be a Plex Media Server, and that's it, it has no other purpose besides being a Plex Media Server, if you, were to, if you were to install Windows on this, if you install your Plex, your Plex data folder, your transcoding sessions, all of that was going off of this SSD, 64 gigabytes should be plenty for what you're needed for. However, it's still going to be a little close. Maybe not that close, but it'll be a little close. And for $10 more, you can jump all the way up to 128 gigabytes from 64. For $10 more, you can double your storage. So you can get away with this one, but I would recommend making the jump and doing the upgrade to the higher SSD just in case, because $10 for double your storage, it's kind of hard to pass that up. As for the power supply, well, this is really just because it's a budget power supply. This is 350 watts, which is more than enough for what we need it for. I got this because it had a few reviews to look at. It looked like it was pretty decent, but the thing I liked about it is that it had three SATA connections. Now, I would like to have more SATA connections, but I wanted this one to at least have three SATA connections to get us started. So what that means is it's gonna be enough to power the SSD that we're putting in it, it's gonna be enough to power the first hard drive that I selected to put in it, plus it'll be enough to power the second hard drive that you decide that you wanna put in it later down the line, or right off the bat for that matter, if you wanna add a hard drive. It does have four pin Molex connections, so you can easily get a Molex splitter that goes from one Molex connection to two SATA power cables. That would allow you to expand your server in the future and you wouldn't need very many of those because, and even if you did, it's, they're pretty cheap. So either way, you get plenty of options to power what you have here. You can fill out that case with hard drives if you needed to and still have plenty of power. Uh, when it comes to price, this is just, this is going to be one of the better choices. Definitely getting something that is going to give you that price per dollar um, performance that you're looking for in a budget build like this. Now onto RAM. So I went with G-Scale because I've always went with G-Scale. I've always trusted G-Scale and they have never treated me wrong. This one is eight gigabytes and it's two by four gigabyte DIMMs. Now, the reason why I went with that one rather than let's say four by two gigabyte DIMMs is kind of obvious because in the future, if I wanted to upgrade, I wanted to have that ability. Now I only went with eight gigabytes because realistically, Plex is not going to need all of that memory. You don't need 16 or 32 gigabytes for Plex. Plex is heavily dependent on CPU power and secondhand, they're gonna be dependent on the SSD for better transcoding speeds. So the memory is not really a crucial part here. If you team this up with a good solid CPU, a nice fast SSD, only eight gigabytes of RAM is going to be perfect. If you wanted to expand in the future or repurpose this PC, that motherboard that I picked would allow you to do that. Also, something I forgot, I went with this motherboard for another reason, because this motherboard has onboard video. This will allow us to not have to buy a video card. Forgot to mention that before, but there it is, it has onboard video, so you don't have to worry about a video card if you want to plug in to make sure it's programmed correctly. You don't have to worry about any of that. This has everything built into it, so that saves money right off the bat. As for hard drives, now this is definitely up to each user. 
I am a true fan of the Western Digital Red Drives because they're a good price and they're good capacity for said price. Now the HDST drives, the four terabytes are usually about 20 to 30, sometimes $40 more expensive, depending on the month that you look at them. Uh, I would probably say that those drives are gonna be more reliable just based off the numbers I've seen online before. Um, but I have had nothing but good luck with these drives. You could go down to cheaper drives if you wanted to, and you can switch this around. But for me, I've always went in four terabyte drives. What I would recommend is picking the drive that you plan to stick with. So if you wanna start off with five or six terabyte drives, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that your next drives that you get are gonna be the same drives. That way, in the future, if you start doing things like a RAID 5 array or RAID 6 or any kind of like a, a Linux build where you're running the ZF uh, file system, you have everything gonna be the same drives. It's gonna allow that to work for you without any kind of complications. So in this particular build, I'm starting you off with four terabytes of space. That's gonna be one drive. There's gonna, not gonna be any redundancy or any kind of data protection, but this is just a starter kit build. This is only gonna get you started in the Plex Media Server uh, environment. So wrapping this all up, I went ahead and built this on a PC part picker. And I always recommend to do this because this allows you to not only make sure that the price that you found is gonna be cheap, or gonna be the cheapest price, but it's also gonna allow you to check for any kind of compatibility issues with the build. So when you go in here, you can see if there's anything that's gonna say if there's uh, any compatibility issues. So for example, this case that I has has some weird issue with the USB front panel. So the, it doesn't have any USB 3.0 headers. Not a big deal. I don't care about that. Everything else works. Everything else checks out. Most of them go into Newegg for the cheapest price. The Western Digital Reds are, are uh, shooting me over to B&H Photo just because they have them in stock probably. But everything else though checks up here. So what we have is with $500, we have a Plex Media Server, as long as you went with the CPU that I chose, that is gonna be, be able to handle just about everything the average Plex Home Media Server user will want to throw at it. And what I mean by that? Well, I mean, you could have an Xbox in the living room, you could have a Fire TV downstairs, you could have a tablet playing, and maybe even somebody off-site playing a movie or TV show on their phone all at the same time without running into any bottlenecks. That's what this server is gonna be able to provide you, at least three to four streams without any problem. If you're lucky, you could probably get six or more streams out of this server without ever running into a bottleneck. Now, of course, this is just a starter server. So that means this, this only has one hard drive. I always would recommend to have some sort of redundancy, even though my Plex Media server doesn't have any redundancy, but that's my own problems right now. I always recommend redundancy because if you lose all your hard work and ripping and, 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 and converting all of your video files to be able to work on your Plex Media Server, it would be crushing to lose all of that data just because of a hard drive failure. So with this server, you can start off with the one hard drive that I said or whichever one that you decide to pick, but you could also add a second one and add a mirror, or you could add a third, fourth, or a fifth, or whatever you wanna do, and you could start building RAID arrays, something like a RAID 5 or a RAID 6 if you decided to go down that route, or like I said before, the Linux build that allows you to go through the ZF file system. So this is definitely gonna be a nice starter area for most people. It's gonna give you a, pl a plenty powerful uh, media server that's gonna allow you to grow, it's gonna allow you to expand, and it's in a pretty decent budget for most people. I know $500 could be kind of expensive to some, but to have a $500 media server that's gonna handle everything that you need, I think that's kind of a home run for most people. If you have any questions about this build or anything whatsoever, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure to try to address as many as I could. If you see any issues with this build, please also make sure to scream at me and let me know in the comments. I did some, I did some pretty good research on this, but uh, you know, I am human, so maybe I could have screwed up. Uh, overall though, if I was gonna build a budget PC that was gonna serve solely as a Plex Media Server, this would be right up my alley. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below and have a good day.